I'm Ted Ryan, Archives and Heritage Brand Manager. Uh, been at Ford for four years, and we've been planning for this Lincoln anniversary, it feels like, for those four years, getting ready for it. Uh, I actually have a personal Lincoln story. Uh, my dad had a, a 19, has a 1957 Mark II, and his favorite car is his 1940 Lincoln Continental that was owned by Randolph Scott. Uh, if anybody's at Concourse, uh, Pebble Beach later this year, you'll see it there, made the show. And his daily driver is an aviator, so I feel like I have Lincoln coursing through my blood because uh, I grew up around it. Uh, we're going to take you through a, a curated experience. We've already had so much time in here, so I'm not going to spend as much time in this room because you've read all the labels and seen the cars. But just to tell the quick origin story, Lincoln was founded in 1917 by Henry Leland uh, to build airplane motors during World War I. Uh, at the end of the war, he wanted to transition uh, to begin manufacturing cars, and he did. And Leland was well known in the industry for his excellent engineering. What he wasn't known for was a sense of style and beauty. This uh, 1923 Model L uh, is distinctive in a couple ways. A, it was Thomas Edison's personal vehicle. This was given to him by Henry Ford. Uh, we borrowed this one from our partners at the Henry Ford Museum. But at the same time, you can see that it doesn't have the style and elegance that you would expect uh, from the later Lincolns. Edsel Ford was named the president of Lincoln shortly after the purchase uh, by Ford in 1922. Why did Ford have to purchase him? Because Leland had gone bankrupt. Uh, Lincoln was in receivership and owed $8 million on that contract. Uh, Ford paid the $8 million, but then Edsel oversaw the expenditure of another $4 million to pay off the additional creditors uh, with Lincoln, and then he made a personal uh, uh, contribution to Leland uh, uh, as part of the settlement uh, for the sale. You transition from the 23 to the 37 Model K uh, coach. This is interesting because it's the coach building era. On the printout that's over here, if you get a chance later to look at it, you can see the list of all the different coach builders Lincoln was using. Uh, names like Fleetwood, Brun, LeBaron, uh, most of the uh, coach builders of the day. What Edsel did that was a little bit different though, is he would buy in bulk when he found one that he liked. So if he found a uniform body that he liked, he might buy 50 of those particular coaches in order to bring the cost down. Uh, unfortunately, the Depression put an end to that. Uh, Edsel said later he'd keep building Model Ks as long as people bought them, but people weren't buying them anymore. So he had to transition, and when he transitioned, he and Bob Gregory created a design classic, the Lincoln Zephyr. Uh, while it wasn't the very first streamlined car introduced, it was the first that was popularized and accepted uh, by the masses. It became the signature link, uh, luxury vehicle for the Lincoln brand name. Uh, a couple of factoids on it. A, it was called the Zephyr after the West Wind because of the aerodynamic quality and some of the work that he did. And even the teardrop logo is supposed, uh, supposed to make you feel evocative of the wind traveling over the car. If you look at the exhibit case over there as well, you'll note that this is where Lincoln made its first appearance internationally as well. The Zephyr in the top left-hand photo on the left-hand page is being uh, shown in Shanghai in 1936 and a little bit lower in Hong Kong. Uh, Lincoln is now a world-class and worldwide vehicle. So now we've entered the land of the 50s through the 70s. This is a particularly interesting vehicle to me. It's the 53 Lincoln X prototype. This was uh, nicknamed a laboratory on wheels. If you read the press release that's at the back, you can see some of the features. I'll highlight just a couple of A, well, it's a working vehicle, but it had a roof that could detect rain, and the sunroof would close automatically. Uh, it had a uh, built-in seat heaters. It had a built-in telephone. Some of the features that we still have today. Then it had some features that we don't have today, like our electric razors built into the car, uh, or a variable uh, audio horn that could be louder or softer depending on how you were traveling. Like receiving? Yeah. Yeah, and actually I've got the side story, the Continental X that, that package is there, that's the electrical uh, diagram kit for this car and we pulled it and gave it back to the Henry Ford uh, a couple of months ago because they're trying to get the shaver working. Uh, <laughs> so you know, we, we partnered with them a lot. They were generous to loan us the vehicle and we loaned them back the, the manual on it. The next vehicle that you'll see 
is the limousine. I, this is a great story. It's built for New York uh, for the visit of uh, Pope Pius VI, but then was transferred to the city of Chicago, where it served as a, uh, the official parade vehicle in the city of Chicago. Uh, any celebrity or any uh, notable person that got a parade in Chicago would have been in this uh, particular Lincoln limousine, including the astronauts of both Apollo 11 and Apollo 13. Uh, Apollo 11, uh, we like to say this is where Buzz Aldrin got his love for Lincoln and riding in this one because he just recently got a Lincoln Black Label Edition Nautilus for his 92nd birthday. Uh, so going back to his Lincoln roots. And then in the display that you see over there, we highlight uh, Lincoln and the presidential limousines. If you have an opportunity, if you've never done it, do take time to go to the Henry Ford Museum and look at the lineup of the Lincoln limousines uh, that had all the presidents. And from there, we go straight to the 70s and the Bell Bomb and uh, Cannon, and you've got the design series. This particular one is a 1979 uh, Mark V, but the design series actually started in 1975 in the last year of the Mark IVs. Uh, there were four different designers, uh, Pucci, uh, Bill Blass, uh, Cartier, and G1C. Uh, who were the initial designers that practiced in that old day. Uh, who were the initial designers who uh, worked with us. And when you look at the exhibit case, I love it too, it wasn't just a license agreement. Yes, Cardi has had in the window here, but they actually sent members of their design team to work with the Ford designers to pick the color, the trim, and the style. And each year there were subtle differences made uh, to the different vehicles. I forgot to see if the movie can. You're going to have time as we exit. We're going to exit through the same way. So if you have anything that you want to get additional photos, additional questions, there will be time for that as well. And what fascinates me as well is how so much of the advertising actually bears the quiet flight, the birds in motion, or you see the motion that you come to expect with Lincoln now. Hazard to guess how many movies and TV shows Lincoln has appeared in? A <laughs> hundred. More than 10,000 uh, movies and TV shows. And uh, the, with the Continental Magazine, there used to be a feature each month that would show, okay, what were we in recently? And so you've got High Society and Canon and all the other portraits of success with uh, uh, Rockwell owned a Lincoln. And but the, we highlighted over and over how the brand was an aspirational brand and that that carries through from pop culture into who owns it uh including uh the one and only elvis the king is anybody gonna be in new york at the auto show i'll see you there because we've worked with graceland and we're gonna have elvis's mark ii on display on the on the stand and the story's a cool one you'll hear it now you hear it again then uh he his fans discovered that he was in miami and covered his existing lincoln with lipstick and he turned that in at the dealership and bought a mark ii uh, and used it as his daily driver including when he went to new orleans to film king creel uh, but elvis wasn't the only owner of the mark ii it was such a, a symbolic vehicle sinatra bought one uh, Liz Taylor had one painted the color of her eyes. It was the world's most expensive, most classic vehicle, and it became a who's who. Well, that's the same uh, as today, where you aspire to a vehicle like a Lincoln. Then the fantastic Futura story, just like that X100 was a working prototype. The Futura was a working prototype for Lincoln uh, that was later sold to Chuck Barris, who turned it into the Batmobile. So if you've ever seen the original Batmobile, you've oh, seen that. Yep, you see the Gussie Duck Lincoln Futuro uh, working concept model uh, done by Chuck Ferris. So, the Mark II story is a fantastic story. Edsel Ford died in 1943, and the Lincoln or the Continental nameplate was discontinued in 1948. Uh, it was felt that nobody had on the appetite to take on Edsel Ford's personal favorite vehicle, his, the one he had designed from scratch. That's until William Clay Ford, his youngest son, 
uh, raised his hand and said that he wanted to crack at it. And beginning in 1952, uh, he formed a, a committee to begin, a special projects committee, to begin concepting what the Continental was going to become. They did it in a fascinating way. They had the designers, both internal and external, this is unusual, they brought in four external, I think well, maybe four or five, external uh, firms to compete with uh, Lincoln's own internal designers to see who could come up with the best design of the vehicle. But then he had them do iterations on it where uh, he had them imagine what a 50 and a 52 and a 54 Continental would have looked like as they presented what the 56 Mark II was going to look like. Uh, and this notebook over here, which don't touch, there's many things that you can touch in this place. Don't touch that one. Uh, we've already from the museum. This is William Clay Ford's personal notebook showing, and it has photos of all of the design proposals that were submitted by the, both the external designers and the internal designers. And then the smaller notebook that's right here, that's actually Benson Ford's personal notebook on the production of the uh, uh, Continental uh, Mark II bolt. We have more than three million negatives in a cooler that's down there. Uh, our film vault is right there. We have thousands of titles there. And the video vault is around the corner. Uh, we have more than uh, 16,000 cubic feet of material. If you took all the shelves and did them end-to-end, -end, what did we say? Three miles. Three miles of shelving in here. Uh, we have art, we have memorabilia. Color and fabric and trim. I like, and then you can see some of them. Uh, that's the Cartier uh, edition. On the, on the back, you can see the dress made out of the same fabric that would have been used for the interior. Oh, yeah. I've seen this stuff before. Um, it's the opportunity for you guys to get close to it. And then in the analog world before computers, oh, this, is cool. this is how you chose your car color. Oh, I don't want it. Gold, I want brown. So you would flip through and decide what color color it was that you wanted to. Uh, no brand has unparalleled success for, for all time. In the case of Lincoln, after the 57 Mark II had been had set such a high water mark, uh, they moved away from that design and they moved to, uh, Robert describes it as more bulbous uh, design, and the 57, 58, 59 Lincolns were not beautiful and they, they didn't sell as well. And the company was trying to decide what to do, and they, there's four different alternatives. You wonder why blue paper, every, uh, blue paper means an official vice president or hire issued this particular document. Uh, so whenever we're flipping through our files and we see blue paper, we know it's important. In this particular case, there's four different choices, and he's reading the finished one over there where they took alternative two, develop a specialty type car similar to the Thunderbird and approach and appeal. Take yourself back to this time period, though. Do you have... Uh, this is actually the MEL division, uh, Mercury, Edsel, Lincoln. There's a lot of disparate thought about which product is going to be the winner, which is not, well, the Edsel obviously isn't going to be the winner. The T-Bird a few years before had been the winner, so the thought was to create something as iconic for the Lincoln brand as the T-Bird had been for the Ford brand. Interestingly, you'll note that pillarless door uh, uh, manual from 1955, they had begun thinking about the coach doors as early as the Mark II. Uh, William Clay Ford realized that the, the Achilles heel of the Mark II was the fact that it was only a two door and he was looking to create a four door. Uh, so they took that idea and applied it to the ongoing uh, work being done to develop the 61 Continental. And uh, I think they made the right choice out of the Ford to to create an iconic vehicle. You've heard the name Etzel Ford uh, constantly today, and uh, we did this in part to shine a spotlight on uh, someone who we think is one of the most underappreciated uh, people in the automobile industry. Uh, and we wanted to sh tell you a little bit more about the man Etzel Ford. Uh, Etzel was exactly, in many ways, the opposite of Henry. He was erudite, he was artistic, he was well-read, he was well-traveled, uh, he loved art. You can see some of the artwork that he drew himself. We borrowed it back from the Henry Ford Museum. Uh, early sketch of his, of a, of a version of a car. And the Lincoln Magazine, Edsel Ford designer, he never actually went to design school, but in reality, uh, and speaking to Bob Gregory, he was a designer. 
uh, and his uh, greatest design is a Continental, which we'll get to in just a second. Uh, with the Diego Rivera uh, mural, if you've seen it at the Detroit Institute of Art, it's just amazing. Everybody else is depicted in an industrial setting, and Leslie's the one that spotted this the other day. Edsel is the only one that's shown in a design studio. It's uh, as though Diego Rivera is paying homage to the man who A, commissioned the painting, uh, but had the same sensibilities in art and art and style as Rivera himself. Uh, you can see in the photo there, that's Edsel and Eleanor Ford arriving at the uh, place to consummate the purchase of Lincoln in 1922. The 41 Continental, this is Elvis's person, I'm Elvis, thought. This is uh, Edsel's personal uh, Lincoln Continental. Uh, the story of the Continental is well known. He went to Europe in 1938, he came back and he and Bob Gregory began to modify a Lincoln Zephyr to get a uh, car for Edsel to use personally. Uh, he actually built three of them, and then he gave one to Henry uh, II and Vincent Ford, uh, his sons. Uh, but he took one to Florida, and the story is he came back from uh, Florida with orders for 200 more Continentals. And at that point, he decided to take it from a personal car line and begin to make it one of the lines uh, within the Lincoln universe. Uh, stunningly beautiful vehicles.